So good morning to everybody. I am Chiara Prisco and I'm uh, talking from uh, Fercam Fine Art, the business unit that is uh, taking care of uh, transport and any type of is connected to the art logistics world and today we are going to be talking about uh, the method and procedure for handling and transportation of cultural goods that we normally use um, we will talk then about soft semi-rigid and rigid packaging when it comes to the hard world so which one are the methods and procedure for handling transportation of cultural goods? As you can imagine, of course, there is no such a fixed answer about this. We need to have an analysis of the art pieces concerning which is going to work, and we need to analyze all, all of the risk factors that might be concerning the art piece and its movements. Of course, we need to talk about the nature of the object, uh, the construction techniques, the age of the object, the condition, the initial condition before transportation. And then afterwards, we are going to talk about the distress that the artworks might have during transportation, the type of vehicles that we are going to use, the number of technicians that are going to work at the project. And of course, all the handling techniques and spaces that they are going to be in the exhibition places at the borrower and the during the old transportation moments and of course at the destination exhibition we are going to check the site and we're going to see if there are any stairs if there is an easy way of transfer the artworks and install it as well and um of course, we need to share all this information both with the borrower and the lenders. And um, we are going to present our preferred choice of handling methods and the type of packaging. And if we are going to apply anti-vibration cages and all uh, the possibility and our idea or our proposal in order to overcome any possible stress to the artwork. Uh, of course, we're going to present uh, our solution in order to minimize the impact of the transportation, uh, such as, you know, the cure and attention for temperature and humidity that are going to be necessarily caused by any variation in the air pressure and temperature, and what we are going to do in order to overcome that possible stress. And we are going to, of course, uh, use uh, some methods. The most basic ones are like the use of appropriate gloves during handling and um, a protective case, what we're going to talk later on in this uh, lesson, which is like a sealed, waterproof, and thermally insulated crate in order to um, make sure that the art piece doesn't have any distress uh, during transportation and of course we are going to talk later on to a period of acclimatization upon delivery and before collection before opening the packaging these are some of the most popular handling methods when it comes to art logistics of course the uh, choice of the preferred packaging and handling methods is based on the morphological characteristic of the piece, the, con the conservation peculiarities of the object. Of course, a lot, if it's a, a sculpture, uh, it really depends on the materials of the object. It really depends as well on the various factor risk like the age uh, if it had previous problems of course is more difficult to, to preserve an art pieces like um, a painting if it has a previous damage so we need to take care of that as well or if it was previously restored for example when it comes to a sculpture and um, of course i'm gonna try to um, give an example of all the commonly used packages for transporting various type of artworks so wood panels painting oil on canvas uh, works on paper sculpture and any other type of art object and this example assume um, standard uh, morphological characteristic of the work that don't require 
specific equipment. In those cases, we normally work straight and directly with the borrower and the lender in order to find a solution. Of course, like following the prescription of the um, contract that there is going to be at the base of the um, exhibition. And in these... Uh, um, these possibilities that I'm going to present, they might not cover all the transportation scenarios. It's just like a, an example of the general approach that Ferk and Fine Art adopts to address the common needs in the art field logistics. So when it comes to wood panels or line long canvas, we focus our observation on the specific elements like if the panel has a curve if there is some patching the intervention of a, like a restoration that was previously applied to the paintings so that we can check if there are there is any fragility that we need to take care of the presence of the frame and you know the dimension of the frame because this can change a lot the type of packaging that needs to be created in order to avoid any empty space you know and also any pressure the presence of the backing patterns that connect one or more axes of the panels together as well and um, generally for most cases uh, involving very old wood a climb a clay crate is preferred we are gonna talk about this type of support later on this normally allows a uh, more perfect protection because the artworks especially when there is wood or any other type of paper or any other type of um, material support that uh, could be shot by the change of temperature and humidity is best because um, of course the climate creates uh, a kind of protects all the various stages of transportation from handling to the delivering and of course um, we move artworks during all season so it might be very cold or very hot outside and have a climate rate and a climate track means that the artwork is normally more preserved and controlled in during all these movements and in the specific cases um, of uh, so we already see this so uh, when it comes to the a very large size artworks um, normally, of course, it is more difficult to move and we need more technician and uh, we need to make sure that the weight is uh, also a point of an issue. We need to focus on that. Normally, we wrap the artwork in tissue paper before placing it in the case, uh, whether this is climate rate or not, and then we evaluate this on base to base because the frame can be also a point to take care of during this type of packaging. It's generally preferred to avoid excessive material inside the case in order um, to minimize any fraction or unnecessary weight that could, you know, lower or pressure the artworks. And um, for this type um, of goods, several packaging options, they need to be considered depending on how the artworks are preserved. If they are framed, of course, uh, it really depends from the lender, but we can both transport a frame and artwork all together, and this is the most common option. Otherwise, we can transport the frame separately if this is the case and this is most commonly used when it comes to um you know works on paper because they are they don't always travel with their own frame and glass if i'm framed to work on paper of course the use of acid free folder is mostly common in order to secure the transportation in order to avoid any friction in order to avoid any uh, you know air contact with the piece and it's very important that is anti-acid otherwise corrosion might happen and um, of course we normally do one single folder anti-acid folder for each artwork when it comes to uh, you know work on paper but we can also use one folder for more than one artworks it really depends from each case this is kind of a when it comes to art package 
working in the um, art field, in logistics, it's really a bespoke matter. So the acid-free containers, they need to be evaluated with the work, with their age, and with the specific of their transport. But they can, basically, they can be packed individually or all together that's also possible so if they are transported together of course there is going to be more attention because they are not alone in their own folder so there's going to be some tissue paper acid free paper and tear resistant paper between the artworks in order to be like a dividing element and to ensure maximum protection of course um, we normally follow the normal guidelines when it comes to this so the humidity must be between 50 and 55 percent the temperature between uh, 18 20 um, degrees celsius and the ph range between 6.5 and 8.5 so and normally we mostly take care of preserving the condition of the art piece that was before we would going to move it. So we normally kind to, um, tend to avoid any distress. So for when it comes to marble, terracotta and metal sculptures, they should be packed in a specific case uh, and they are secured internally with like a um, specifically shaped wooden partition. These partition, they are inserted and they are constructed upon the art pieces. They don't put pressure, but they are kind of designed with the art pieces in order to avoid any kind of loose movements, movements in the crates, any type of damage of the artwork in order to like dissipate the friction and of course all the necessary uh, movement that are going to be um, happening during the transport uh, is important to have them arrive and discharge at the end of the art pieces in the crate that is so protected in order to make so to make so happen and um, in case of sculpture of art object as well as painting or canvas or drawings um, we need to check the type of packaging case by case for multiple small side objects um, we can have a multiple crates it really depends on the dimension and weight of each object and also the nature of the object is really important because we cannot mix different um, materials all together because they might have different needs and they might have to be differently protected by the transportation and packing methods so in, sometimes when the ob objects are really fragile a double crate can be employed to have a proper type of packaging when it comes to sculpture art object but also painting especially if they are particularly fragile having a double crates is very important because uh, in, it gives extra protection to the artworks that, that are packed in such a methods so in the next chapter we are going to be talking to um, about the most commonly used uh, type of packaging whether they are soft or semi-rigid or rigid packaging uh, this is all for now for this first part and i thank you very much for your attention <laughs>